Hello everybody, thank you so much for joining me on my channel and welcome to this series of Distress Ink and Oxide colour combinations. So working through each of the Distress Inks and Oxides alphabetically, a video for each colour, including things like black soot and um, picket fence as well will do, just to show you uh, why you need those colours in your stash. Um, what colours they work with particularly well as well. Um, I like to show you that to give you some ideas for colour combinations. But of course, you're also then going to get colour combinations for the other colours that I'm using. So hopefully you can build up a complete library within this playlist for you to refer back to. So I'm going to be using a brushed corduroy, as I said today. So we're uh, working our way through the Bs. Uh, everything's alphabetical, so all the A's are up there now working on the Bs. I'm going to show you brushed corduroy and I'm going to start in the middle because my first colour combination I'm going to be adding colours either side. Now this brown, so it is a sort of neutral, it's very much a tan colour, what I call a tan colour. Now it's got um, a very yellow base, it's really lovely. Um, I say that about all the colours, they are lovely, um, either on their own and mixed with others. As you can see there, so we've got, like I say, a tan colour, a very warm brown, quite a light brown as well. Um, really lovely, you're just going to be able to use it with so many different colours. You can go, we're going to go cool with blues, you can also go warm with reds as well, and I'm going to be doing each of those. So then on to the um, the two or three colour combination, adding in two additional colours. So I'm just going to wipe my mat. So the blending mat, the blending brushes and everything I'm using is all linked below so you can find where I got them from. Now I'm going to go with a lovely bright salvage patina, a, uh, a bright blue, almost a green, a mint colour. And wow, these two just work so beautifully together. If you want something that's a bit steampunky but you don't want to go down the dark route, this is perfect. You get a lovely brown mix between the two where they blend and it kind of picks out the yellow as well a bit into the blue. So almost a green in there. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? So you could just use those two colours if you wanted for a background. Now we have already done a video on black soot. So uh, you'll be able to see there how I use black soot in my colour blends quite a lot but I'm going to add it into this particular combination because I think with a brown being a neutral, you don't really want to be mixing it with anything other than one colour, so or one range of colours. So I've got the blue this end. So this end, I don't want to have anything else besides another neutral. So I'm going in with black soot. And the black soot is more of a charcoal colour. We've covered that in the video and you can refer back to that by uh, going through the playlist, you'll find that. But let's just bring black soot, those sort of grey tones up into brushed corduroy, or rather brushed corduroy down into black soot. There we go. Look at that. So if you want something, I need to put a bit more black soot at the bottom there. I've not quite caught all the paper, but isn't that lovely? You've got the brightness of the blue lifting it, so it's really dark down here. And if you do want something really dark, you can absolutely use those colours. But adding in that blue is just perfect. So I just need to um, add in a little bit more blue, black, sorry, down here just to, because what I'll do with all these strips, I will write on the back of them what the colours are so that I can refer back to these colour combinations. So that's one colour combination. Now let's go for another one. We're going to go this time, let's give this a wipe, but we're going to go with four colours. And we're going to go down the red tones this time, just to show you how uh, this particular brown does work beautifully with both cool and warm shades. So let's start with brushed corduroy first of all on the end. Look how beautifully that, this is the beauty of a new ink pad, it just goes on so smoothly. Nice heavy application of ink there. There we go. And I work around in circles to ensure the grain of the paper is caught at all angles, make sure I haven't got any small white spots missing. And then I'm going to go in with Rusty Hinge as my next colour. So we're bringing in the warmth and the orange, again a really deep colour. They work so well together. That blend, look at that. I've hardly had to work at that blend at all. And that's just worked well, hasn't it? 
I'm going to bring this up slightly, so lighten that. Then we're going to go into a red, a really dark red. You know, so I'm not actually cleaning my mat between colours this time because they're all similar sort of shades, all the warms, the reds and things, so uh, reds and oranges. Now, fired brick is a red red. It's a post box red. It's a, it's a fire engine red. So that is going to go into an orange. I find reds are actually one of the easiest colours to blend if you're sticking with reds and oranges. There we go. And lastly, to deepen the bottom of this, I'm going to go with aged mahogany. So I think I might just wipe that yellow off because I don't really want yellow into... Well, it's not yellow, it's the brushed corduroy, but I don't really want that going into my aged mahogany because it's such a different colour now. And there we go. Beautiful, just darkens. It's almost like the effect of putting the black soot onto the bottom of the brushed corduroy, but just darkening the ends there. Lovely. So we have got there brushed corduroy, rusty hinge, fired brick, and then aged mahogany. There we go. Isn't that lovely? So warm, so deep, autumnal. You could add gold into this. It would look so beautiful for sort of fall and autumn time of year. It'd be ideal. So there's two combinations, both using the brushed corduroy within it. I've actually gone quite dark with these, so it'd be nice to maybe take another look at lighter shades with this another time. But if you see there, you really can brighten this colour up lots. So thank you so much for joining me again, everybody, for brushed corduroy, looking at this colour in particular. And please do join me again and hit the subscribe so that you're notified of any other videos. And don't forget everything I've used, including the blending mat, the brushes, the inks, they're all linked below for you so you can see where I get my supplies. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you again very soon.